of the law will not be upon the children of God. And the Bible says that Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. And because he laid his life for us and he said we are his stripes, we are healed. Sickness has no part in us. Are you opening your mouth and saying every sickness that you may have experienced even up to this point in your life. Every sickness that your loved one is going through. That you have done everything that is possible and it's not yet healed. They begin to claim that which is yours. It costs the blood of Jesus. He's not costing you any money. It costs Jesus' life and his blood. And that healing is yours today. Father, I receive my healing completely from the top of my head to the sole of my feet. I receive my healing, oh God, in every area that I have struggled, Father, with health. Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, I receive my healing today. I receive my healing today. I receive my healing today. Because Christ has paid the price. Thank you, Father. For we have prayed in Jesus' name. Father, we want to thank you. We want to thank you for the cross. We want to thank you for the sacrifice. We want to thank you for the love that made our Lord Jesus Christ to leave his throne in heaven and come to earth, take on the form of flesh and die a shameful death on the cross. But we thank you for that because it did not end in the grave. That on the third day he rose and because he has risen, we are alive today and we can face tomorrow and we have the victory. Father, we thank you. I will pray that because of the resurrection power, that there will be no more death in our lives, oh God. That there will be no more stagnancy in our lives, oh God. There will be no more dormancy in our lives, oh God. But our Father will experience life, oh God. In if you are sitting down, you are on the long trip, oh. It is Easter Sunday. Let us praise the Lord. The one who died on the cross for our sins. So Oh, oh, oh.
keep clapping let's keep clapping let's clap for the lord let's clap for the lord let's celebrate jesus let's celebrate our lord even as we welcome the children Good morning, parents. While the children from six to eight, we are presenting a song of Easter celebration. Thank you. Easter is a season of reconciliation because through his death, Jesus gave mankind the opportunity to be reconciled unto God. John chapter 3 verse 16. Easter is a call for us to be selfless, to consider others over and above our personal interests, to be forgiving and kind-hearted towards one another. It is also a reminder that no matter what the challenges we face are, with, with faith in God, there is hope of a turnaround. Matthew, Matthew chapter 11 verse 28. Come unto me, all ye, all ye that labor and are heavy landed, and I will give you rest. Wishing us all a joy-filled Easter. Thank you. He loves, he loves me, I cannot say why. He loves me, I
God bless you. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. Somebody shout thank you for the cross. Shout thank you for the cross. You know, everything that we're enjoying today, the victory, the redemption, the healing, it's all because of the cross. And that is why we have come to sing a simple song. And we pray as a listen, you'll be blessed in Jesus' name. Verse 12. There is no one else who has the power to save us. For there is only one name whom God has given authority by which we must experience salvation. The name Jesus. Shout Jesus! Jesus! There is power in the name. Shout Jesus! Jesus! And I pray today by the power that raised Jesus from the dead that in this season as you shout that name Jesus something special something supernatural will happen for you and your household in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There is power in the name.
you shout her name? Can I hear you call her name? The name that is above every other name. The Bible says that name Jesus is above every other name. But at the mention of it, every name we bow, every tongue we confess. If you believe in that name this morning, I want you to shout a big hallelujah. And I want you to say, Jesus, I are going to shout that name. Hallelujah. That name, Jesus, we are going to shout it ten times this morning. And let's see what that name will do. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Today is celebration Sunday. I'm sure a lot of people will be wondering why all the praise, why all the worship. The truth is that I think we've been getting Easter wrong for a while until God has to show me something different. This year. Victory. Victory has come. He has conquered death. He conquered death. To overcome the tribulation of the world. Because of man, death came. He saw death in the face. He went into the beat. He conquered death. He made a body, he made a body show of death. Lord Jesus, we thank you. We thank you. Because without this, everything that you have said would have come to nothing. But with, with your resurrection, everything about you has been established. I have been spoken concerning you. Everything that has been spoken concerning you in heaven, by God, and here on earth, it will be established for you. It will be established for your children. It will be established for your wife. It will be established for, 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 for your husband. It will be established for your parents. It will be established in your marriage. It will be established in your career. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And if there is anyone here this morning. Uh, that the enemy may have come against maybe your health or all your loved ones. I'm standing also on the authority in the resurrection power to speak to that your loved one that may be in the hospital anywhere today. I say, let the power of resurrection go forth. Let it touch that body. Let it touch that person. Let healing come. Let hope return. Where hope was lost, let hope return. In the name of Jesus Christ, Father, we bless you. We give you praise. In Jesus Christ's name, we have prayed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, Happy Easter. Woo. Jesus died for me. And he has risen. Let somebody say, He is risen. Hallelujah. Thank you very much. You make May go to your seats. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. By the grace of God, I pray that me and you will celebrate more Easter's together as uh, given to us from the mission, the resurrection and life. Amen. The resurrection and life. Amen. Praise the Lord. Please. I don't know. I spell okay, maybe quite a lot of people travel. It is well. The book of John, chapter 11. I will read from verse 1. I 
hope I will be able to read to verse 27, but I'll try. Say, so now a certain man was sick, named Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary, and her sister Martha. It was that it was that Mary which anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Therefore his sister sent unto him, saying, Lord, behold, him who thou lovest is sick. When Jesus heard that, he said, This sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. When he had heard therefore that, the, that he was sick, he abode two days still in the same place where he was. Then after that said he to his disciple, Let us go into Judea again. His disciples said unto him, Master, the Jews of late sought to stone thee, and goest thou tither again? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours in the day? If any man walk in the day, if any man walk in the day, he stumbleth not, because he see the light of this world. But if a man walk, walk in the night, he stumbleth, because there is no light in him. This thing said he, and after that he said unto them, Our friend Lazarus sleepeth, but I go. Many of the Jews came to Martha and Mary to comfort them concerning their brother. Then Martha then Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him. But Mary sat still in the house. Then said Martha unto Jesus, Lord, if thou hast been there, my brother would all had not died. But I know that even now, whatsoever thou wilt ask of God, God will give it thee. Jesus said unto her, Thy brother shall rise again. Thy brother shall what? Shall rise again. Mother said unto him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said unto him, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believed me, though he... One thing that I know about the word of God is that though time will pass, the word of God is what? Is forever. Amen. You know, it is a privilege. I remember, and this makes me, that Jesus, when he comes to Jerusalem, he stays with them. It is a privilege those days as a young Christian for us to host our pastors. And the truth is that those days, every family, everybody wanted to work to host their pastors, especially if your pastors are not, they don't stay in the same place with you. Or if your pastor wants to come to your house. But I know that these days, too much uh, familiarity. Even when your pastor is saying he's coming to your house, you don't even want him to come. But those days, it was a big privilege. It was a big thing for any member that your pastor is what? Is coming to your house, even to sleep over. So I can imagine that Jesus coming to Jerusalem and sleeping in what? In the sisters and their brother, the Lazarus house. Amen. It's a very, very, what? A very great privilege. And I remember those days that as many as or a lot of us we want our pastors to come to our house or to come and sleep or whatever is not everywhere the pastor can go. Because there are homes of people that he feels what? Very comfortable with. And I think that Jesus felt very comfortable with Martha and Mary and Lazarus for him to word that any time he comes to Jerusalem he what? He, he stays in their house. Amen. So that's to tell you the closeness. And what was the news? Lazarus had become ill. So Martha and Mary, being Jesus' good disciples, immediately looked to Jesus, telling him that their brother, they sent a message to him, telling him that their brother was sick and they were in trouble. When the disciples of Jesus, look, let me tell you, when the, the disciples of Jesus, as disciples of Jesus, when we were in trouble, we should turn to him. That's a very good lesson. We should do what? We should turn to him. A lot of us these days, when we are in trouble, we don't turn to Jesus. When we are in trouble, we should turn to him. We saw this played out several times in the books of the, of the gospel or in the Bible, in the New Testament. When uh, Peter 
was sinking, who did he turn to? When he was walking on the water, who did he turn to? Amen. Why did he turn to his fellow disciples? Were his fellow disciples not there? They were with him. But who did he turn to? If you say you are a disciple of Jesus Christ, when trouble, when you are in trouble, turn to Jesus. Amen. So Mary and Martha, being very good disciples of Jesus, they turned to who? To Jesus. And no one else. There were people around them. When the word from Martha and Mary came to Jesus, tell, telling him that Lazarus was sick unto death, he was with his disciples. Though Jesus may have been aware of Lazarus' illness and the condition, he did not leave at once like we may have expected, especially concerning a family that I have just told you that were what? That were close to him. This is a lesson for some of us to learn, especially those who seem to be very close to their pastors and expect them to be at the back of what? And their call. He was close to them, but he did not go as expected. The Bible records that Jesus did not leave at once. Rather, he continued with what he was doing and took another two days or so before he walked. He decided to go to them. Why did Jesus delay? Look, let me tell you. A lot of us, because we are so close to our pastors, we think that, oh, immediately we call pastor, he must come. And when he did not come, what do you do? You take offense. We need to learn from this. Amen. They sent a message to Jesus. Look, your friend, they even made your, your good friend, Lazarus, is sick unto death. But Jesus is not come. A lot of you, you just say, I remember when someone, even this one, I was not even so close to the person. He wanted to do, not even that he was in trouble, baby dedication. And that because I did not grant his wish or whatever, what did he do? He rubbished the whole church, not me. We need to understand. Amen. It wasn't as if they were not close. But Jesus had something that he was doing. But let's see, why did Jesus delay it? Was it because he cared less about Lazarus and his sisters? Did Jesus not love or care for them as much as they love him? Did they, did, they, did they not host and care for him? Like we found out, I mean, in this scripture, we were told that who? Mary was the one that did what? That anointed Jesus. Put an ointment and even use what? Her hair to wipe what? Jesus feet so these were very very committed and what dedicated disciples of Jesus if you go to verse 5 the Bible tells us that now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus and in verse 11 of John 11 Jesus calls Lazarus his friend and in verse 35 which is the shortest verse in the Bible he said that what Jesus wept because of who? Lazarus. So that's to tell you that what? They were very, very, he cared for them. He wept for his friend. It is a rare thing for Jesus to weep. So also, even with pastors too. For people. So Jesus' delay was not out of lack of care or love for these people. And we too must learn too that at times when our pastors do not respond to, to us as expected, it is not because they care less or that you are not important to them. Or they don't care for you or they don't love you as much as you love them. Because that is what a lot of us, our pastor doesn't care. Fortunately, do you know that most pastors, and which is me, I even respond to people that are not what? Faster to people that are what? I'm not so close to in church. Amen. But those that what I am close to, because I expect them to what? To understand. I expect that what? Spiritually, they have become what? Matured. And as a result, they should be able to what? To understand and discern. 
But what we find most of the time, you'll find out that these people are the ones that, were, oh, pastor doesn't care. If you are one of those, you have called, it not, may not be me, anywhere, and you think that because they did not respond, on, it's not as, as if he could not have gone there. But there was what? A reason. Hallelujah. Very interesting. It means that there is a purpose beyond what people can relate with for him not responding to the call on him by the sisters. There was a purpose beyond that. But you see, we, we just look at what, well, oh, he did not respond. We saw almost a similar thing play out, played out in the situation of Dorcas or Tabitha in the book of Acts. A woman that was known to be very generous went they sent word to Peter. Is that, is that not so? Amen. For more understanding, let us go back to verse 4. When he was told the message sent by the sisters of Lazarus' illness, Jesus said, this illness does not lead to death. It is for the glory of God, so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Amen. So it wasn't because he did not love them. So that the name of God could be glorified. Some things can be delayed in our lives. It's not because they are not important to be resolved because there is a purpose from God. Amen. If Jesus had responded to the sister's call and gone to be with Lazarus, he may have healed him and the name of God glorified glorified but it will never had the same effect as the raising of Lazarus from the dead did or would have done am I am I correct or not it will not have made the impact because the truth is that they are already used to Jesus healing people isn't it healing the man with the wither hand the one that was born blind so what is new it's not like most of us we take for granted when you pray oh God you go to sleep, you wake up, you move around and everything. You take it for granted. You think that well, God is not doing anything for you. Is that not so? But when God, maybe after something that you've been praying for, for so long, and God answered you, or when it comes to pass, what do you do? I'm asking somebody here, what do you do? You rejoice. You see it as a testimony. And even those around you, they do what? They relate with it. The use as in there, ah, hey, brother Oscar, I key into that your testimony. But when you wake up, when brother Oscar wakes up every day, he goes around, moving around. Nobody will say, brother Oscar, I key into that your testimony. Hallelujah. So if Jesus had come and healed him, it's like a normal world. It's a mundane thing. It will not have made an impact. Amen. Like I said, people have seen Jesus heal people of diverse sickness and ailment. So another one of such may be taken for granted. Like most of us, we take a lot of the blessings of God for granted. The death of Lazarus was an opportunity for Jesus to show his divine power for the glory of God. That they might all believe so that the disciples, Martha, Mary, and even Lazarus himself might know the power and the glory of Jesus Christ. This is what the power of resurrection is all about. Amen. For us to know the power and glory of Christ. That is resurrection. Amen. That is what? Resurrection. For us to know the power of Christ. Of Jesus Christ. Jesus delayed. But there was something bigger in stock. And this morning your blessing may have been delayed. But I'm prophesying. I'm speaking to you this morning. By the power of the resurrection, there is something bigger in stock for you. This is a good reminder for us. When we pray and it's like God is not answering or God is delaying. 
God does not delay. Rather, he has something bigger in stock for us than we can even see. We have something bigger for us that will wow the world, that will give you a better testimony than the one that you are thinking of. Amen. Praise the Lord. Mary and Martha, they were thinking of what? That Jesus, if Jesus had been here, their brother would not have died, would have been healed. Not knowing that what? There's a bigger testimony. My brother and my sister, there's a bigger testimony for you. The one, that, the, the one that will wow the world. The one that you never expected. The one that you never thought of. God will do it for you. I can't hear your amen this morning. That is what the power of resurrection will do for you. Lazarus died. Jesus delayed. When he heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was so that they might see his divine glory and trust in him more fully. Lazarus has been in the grave for four days. By the time Jesus finally got to Mary and Martha and where, and, 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 and got to Mary and, and, I mean, Mary and Martha and where Lazarus was. Hallelujah. When you read the books of the gospel, you will find that it was not only Lazarus that Jesus had actually resurrected. Because if you go to the book of Luke, you will see one or two of such. But all the other accounts were recorded, like I said, in the book of Luke. So I just want to pretend that the account of Lazarus recorded in the book of John is the only one. So let's pretend that it's the only one. Do you imagine what would have happened in the whole of what? Judea. Can you imagine? Because prior to Lazarus, let's imagine that that was the only one recorded. All that Jesus had been doing is what? I can't hear you. What, what has he been doing? Please help me communicate. What has he been doing? If you have sickness, you go to Jesus, he will do what? But all of a sudden, all of a sudden, all of a sudden, let somebody say, all of a sudden, all of a sudden, all of a sudden, a miracle that had never, never been witnessed before, manifested. I say, all of a sudden, for you this morning, a miracle, a testimony that you have never, never thought of before is going to happen for you because of the resurrection power. Hallelujah. So it was really something big. And Jesus delaying is in order to bring a greater glory to the name of God through this miracle. Your blessings may have delayed, but it is to bring a, gl a greater glory to the name of God. God is going to give you a miracle that will bring a greater glory to his name and to the body of Christ in the name of Jesus. Even where we take all accounts of resurrection that Jesus did together are recorded in the Bible. That is that of Lazarus and even the one in the book of Luke. That of Lazarus stands out because he had been dead for how many days? Four days. He was not only dead, but even buried and must have started decomposing as his body was probably not embalmed. People had come to grieve with the family as the culture then dictates. In verse 18, we are told that people came from Jerusalem to agree with Mary and Martha. So, the truth is that what? He is already dead. It's not as if whether he was clinically dead. He is what? D-A-D, dead. Dead, dead, dead. Not whether he died uh, clinically dead, you know? Somebody can be clinically dead and not really totally dead. Amen. Praise the Lord. But this one, Otiku. Oti lo, oti beresin shekini, oti njera, die, die. Hallelujah. Let somebody give him all the glory. He was already robbed in the grave. Ah, Father, I thank you for the power of resurrection. He was already decomposing. People were already what? Mourning. We are told that when matter heard that Jesus was approaching or had come, she let all those that were grieving with them 
and ran to Jesus. Look at another thing again. We must be always take note. In your moment of grieving, run to who? Jesus. She ran to Jesus. Though she was surrendered by other people around her, she ran to Jesus in her hour of need. In your hour of need, run to God, run to Jesus. Look, it does not matter the numbers of people with us. In our hour of need, we should run what? Well. Who should we run to? Jesus. When she ran to meet Jesus, with probable teary eyes, she said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. What a declaration by Martha. That is some act of faith. She trusted or believed that Jesus could have saved or heal Lazarus from dying if he had been there. And she expresses it too. But I think there is an error with this declaration. She said if Jesus had been there, her brother would not have died. What gave her such confidence, I may ask? I don't think that in whatever conversation that Jesus may have had with Martha that he had promised her of keeping Lazarus through this illness. He only said it with his disciples in verse 4 and not her. But what a faith. He said, if Jesus had been there, my brother would not have died. We need to be careful at times. Jesus did not say that, oh, your brother, if he's sick, will not die. Like a lot of us. The reason why we became born again, I keep saying it. We think that what? That immediately we become born again. What happens? Life will be rosy. So when you become born again, you start coming to church. You still fall ill. I've had people ask me such questions. They still fall ill. They still go through problems. They go through the problem that any other person goes through. And they say, what? I beg. This uh, Christianity in awaiting a scam. It's not a scam. Even Jesus said it. He said what? For his sake we will go through what? Trials and tribulations. But we what? Since he overcome the world, that we what? We also will overcome. Even in the face of the trials, what will happen? You what? There is hope because he lives. Because what? Jesus lives. So, if the reason that you decided to start coming to church is because you think that, oh, immediately that your problems will be over, I will tell you, have a rethink. As long as you are in this world, God cannot give you your own world now. It's the same sun that shines on what? Both the believers and unbelievers. We all match the same ground. Is that not so? We all drink the same water. We all breathe the same air. Maybe until that time that we all what? Until the second coming of Jesus Christ. And we all what? We are now in the kingdom of heaven. Then then what? Then we will not go through. But as long as we are here, we will go through what? Trials and tribulations. And a lot of us will love to misquote the Bible. And that's exactly what Martha was trying to do. Jesus never said that what? That your brother was not going to die. Like a lot of us will say, ah, as I don't become Christian, so hey, I don't go poor again. You know, you will not lack again. Yes, spiritually you will not lack. Amen. Another thing that he expressed that was a bit out of place too was that she thinks that if Jesus had been there physically, she said, if, if you had been here, that it would have changed things as if Jesus was not present because he wasn't there physically. Look, Jesus is ever present with us. Hallelujah. Jesus is what? Is ever present with us. I believe that a lot of uh, some Christian denominations thinking like Martha the night I don't know what it was but I believe it is witchcraft or whatever some witches will come and be, be, be pressing us on our bed you know as a young when this thing was troubling me 
I think it was my grandparents or somebody said, okay, you know what, when you want to sleep, take Bible, put it under your pillow. I put Bible tire. They do what? They press me tire. So that's to show you that what? It is not about the physical thing. Jesus is what? Is everywhere. Is your knowledge, is your relationship of, with Jesus that will keep away what? Evil away from you. If you like, put 10 cross. If you like, carry what? How many hundreds of uh, cross that has Jesus' uh, emblem? If you do not have relationship with Jesus, what will happen? They will come to nothing. Are you hearing me this morning? Are you listening to me? It's very, very important. Jesus is everywhere. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Where was I? Okay. Hallelujah. Martha also fell into the error of conjecturing. You know, if, that's what he was saying, if, what, what if, if only, that's what he said, if only you had been here, Jesus, this bad thing would not have happened. If this had been done, this would not have occurred. A lot of us Christians, when things happen to us, we begin to go on the ifs. If only. Ah, if, if, if. What if I had prayed? What if I had not gone there? What if I had not done this? What if I had not done this? What if you had not done that? These are what happened in a moment of weakness. If this has been done, this will not have occurred. I observe that this often happened to us in a moment of weakness. And that is exactly what was happening to matter. The truth is that you would not have even known even if you had done it the other way. That's the truth. All you just need to do is what? Have faith. What do I say? Stop the eaves. What if? Have what? Faith. Believe. Trust. Focus on Jesus. Forget what did you not do. Forget what you would have done. But in your heart of hearts, if you have faith, if you believe and trust in Jesus, that which you expect him to do, he will do it. Amen. Praise the Lord. It will come to pass. That which God has promised concerning you, will, what? will come to pass. Despite all the weaknesses expressed by Martha and probable lack of faith shown by her in her moment of grief, Jesus did not what? Did not rebuke her. And that's for some or a lot of us. When people are grieving, when people are in pain, it's not the time you begin to, to tell them, ah, ah, if only you had done it the other way. It's not the time to do what? To begin to work, criticize or castigate them. Take note. What do I say? Don't castigate people in their hours of pain. Because you make their word, their pain to be heavier. Amen. Commiserate with them. Speak words of comfort to them. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Are you listening to me? But what did Jesus do? In a very kind and comforting way, Jesus said, your brother will rise again. Your what? Your brother will Imagine, I can imagine when Jesus would have said those words to Martha. After all her grieving and everything, I'm sure she would have been used to people who say, oh boy, forget, your brother don't die with this one. Eh? Even though if only that your Jesus had come and everything, your brother will, you know, you know but... Jesus said what? Hey, Martha, your brother will rise again. Your brother will rise again. Hey, my dear sister, you lost that job. God will give you another job again. You may have lost your child, but God will give you something better again. Oh, you lost that money. God will give you another opportunity again. Now that I begin to say, ah, ah, are you sure you are paying your tithe? You know, some pastors are wonderful. 
Are you paying your tight? This, that, that is not the time. Amen. You will make it again. When a brother has fallen, it is not the time we begin to abandon them. But we will say, hey brother, rise up. You will make it again. Sister, rise up. You will what? You will make it again. And I'm speaking to somebody this morning, rise up. You will make it again. I say you will what? You will make it again. Hallelujah. He said what? Your brother. I can imagine her spirit will be lifted. We need to learn not to condemn people in their moments of grief for expressing themselves as they choose. But see Martha's response. When Jesus told her that the brother will rise again, she said, I know she's still grieving. I know that he will rise again in the resurrection of the last day. Assuming that Jesus was referring to what? The resurrection of the last day. You know, when you are grieving, you will just think of some things. Wise Martha believed that believed in the general resurrection and referring to it, Jesus in his response had moved Martha. He, he moved Martha from the general resurrection or believed in the, in, the, in the general resurrection to Jesus who alone can provide the resurrection. And in verse 25, what did Jesus say? What did he say? Do you have your Bible? He said, I am the resurrection. Can you, read, can you say it with me? I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he dies, yet shall live. And everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe? Do you believe in Jesus? Do you believe? I can't hear you this morning. You will make it again. You will rise again. Amen. You may have fallen, but you are going to rise again. Because Jesus is the resurrection and the life. You will make it. Do you believe? Today, God is moving from the general blessings to specific blessing for someone here today. What Jesus was telling Martha, I am not just the one who speaks about and points to the resurrection. I am the resurrection. Jesus is the divine author, the alpha and the omega, the beginning, the fountain of life and the cause and hallelujah. And he's the cause and all that resurrection is all about. Be it spiritual, be it physical, it is Jesus. It only happens, the resurrection only happens through Jesus. Do you believe that? It is not enough that you just believe that there is a resurrection or that there is a heaven. Martha believed in the, in the resurrection, but Jesus redirected her, redirected her focus to himself. Jesus was telling Martha, there is only one way to be, to be, I beg your pardon, to be resurrected to life. And that only way is in Jesus. Him who we, him what? Jesus who, who we pay or have paid the penalty for our sin and triumph over our sin and death and the grave. Let somebody shout hallelujah. Jesus is a resurrection. He is alive. You need to have a personal encounter and a personal faith in him. It is beyond your just believing. But move, move from what just believing to what? To having a personal encounter, a personal relationship and faith in Jesus. Amen. In Jesus' statement, if you read the Bible, Jesus said a lot of things in his statement. He, was, he directed a lot of statements to himself. He said, when he would say, I am, I am this. He says, when he says, I am, it's very, very powerful. He said, one of the first things he said, that, I am the light of the world. It is not just that Jesus gives the light, amen. But what? That he is what? He is the light. He says that he gives the light. He is the one that gives light. Jesus will give light to your life. 
Amen. He will light up your life. Every dark area of your life, I pray that Jesus will light it up in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. He is the light. He says that he gives the bread of heaven. But it is not just that he gives the bread of heaven. He says, I am the bread of heaven. Hallelujah. He says that you must enter through the door. He doesn't just point to the door, but says that what? I am what? The door. Hallelujah. He is the word, the I am. He is the one that can make everything around you turn around. He is the one that, what? that can raise the dead, that, that has the power to raise the dead. He is the one that has the power to heal you. Likewise here this morning, he doesn't say there is a resurrection. He did not say that there is a resurrection and life. What did he say? I am the resurrection and the life. If you want the resurrection, it what? It only comes in me. How can you want to have the res resurrection and its power without you accepting and believing that Jesus Christ is the Son of God? And that he was crucified and died for your sin so that you may what, what? have hope of eternal life. Are you here this morning? We are talking about the resurrection. Without you believing, without you accepting that Jesus is the Son of God, you cannot have that resurrection power. So all has bow, all has closed. Do you want the resurrection power? You want a manifestation of that resurrection power in your life this morning? All eyes closed, all heads bowed. Wherever you are, you say, Pastor, I want it. I want to experience that resurrection power. Wherever you lift up your hands. Mary had been, Martha had been with Jesus for so long, but she still did not understand. Until Jesus had to walk to point it out to her. A lot of us might have been coming to church, but yet we may not have what accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and our Savior. There is no what, there is no shame in it. It all starts one day. So if you are here this morning, whether you are sitting in the gallery or down here, you want to give your life to Jesus. Yeah. Wherever you are, just lift up your hands and I will pray with you. If not, let the rest of us, let all of us stand this morning and just say, Lord Jesus, you are the resurrection and you are the life. Lord Jesus, I want to experience you. I want to experience you as the resurrection this morning. I want to experience you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. As an experience of Jesus as the resurrection this morning. Ask for Jesus. The resurrection brings things back to life. I don't know what may have been dead in your life, but speak. Speak, talk to that thing. Jesus is the resurrection. Ask that our resurrection power will work for you. I can feel tomorrow. We'll take our offering now. All fear is gone because I. Lift up your offering wherever you are and just pray. Let me tell you, the service is not over. We'll still be having celebration. Amen. Praise the Lord. So lift up your offering and just say, Heavenly Father, I thank you for the privilege that you have given to me this morning to be able to give back to you. Bless the work of my hands through this offering. These I have asked. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Please let me fast. <laughs>
dealt with fast. Hallelujah. If you have your tithe, if you drop your tithe, please bring it forward. The church account numbers are on the screen. He has taken my sorrows away. He has taken my sins away. Hallelujah, Jesus is mine. Hallelujah, Jesus is Lord. He has taken my burdens away. He has taken my burdens away. Stretch for their hands to these wonderful people of God that have brought for their tithes so that they will be meeting God's house. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your children who have brought for their tithe this morning in obedience to your word. We ask the Lord that you bless them. You rebuke the devourer concerning them. In Jesus Christ's name, we have prayed. Father, the offering that your children have presented to you this morning, we ask that you bless it in the name of God the Father. God the Son and God the Holy Spirit. In Jesus Christ's name we have prayed. Okay, we'll continue for more praise and worship. Amen. Who is ministry now? Is it Henry Praise? Henry Praise. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Can we jam our hands together for Jesus? This word is your praise. Now, as you're sitting down, look to your neighbor, say, neighbor. Say, neighbor. This is a celebration service. And tell your neighbor, say, neighbor. In the month of April, you will join me in celebration. Now, if you believe that, and if you know that you are going to get your testimony in April or before the end of this month, now walk up to five persons and tell them, I will testify. Walk up to them. We'll stand up on your feet and walk up to them and tell them, I will testify. Five persons, pay. We tell them, I will testify. And tell them, when God blesses me, I will support your business. Tell them like you mean it. When God blesses me, I will support your business. Walk up to them. Some people are still sitting down. If you believe that, stand up on your feet. Walk up to that person. Tell them, when God blesses me, I will support your business. Still remaining two persons. Still remaining two persons. Tell them like you really mean it. It's worthy to be praised. Now can we give Jesus a shout of praise out? The Bible says the shouting side is the winning side. If you are a winner this morning, make a joyful noise. Somebody jump on your feet and jump on your feet and make a joyful noise. It's worthy to be praised. Lift up your hands and say thank you, Abba Father. We're celebrating the resurrection of Jesus. Just say, Lord, we are grateful. Within one minute, can you just lift up your wings and say, Lord, thank you. Lord, we bless you. Abba Father, we thank you. For all the sacrifices you've done. 
Lord, we are grateful for giving us a pathway. Lord, we say glory be to your name. Glory, honor, power to the Lamb of God forever. Amen. Amen. My God, blessings and your praise to the one who reigns forever. Amen. Just the church. Say glory on all. Surrounded by your everlasting love, 
say, why should I give? Why should? What people may say. I say, they don't know. Say, what you mean to me? I say, they don't know. What you mean to me? Oh, yeah. Cosa gara. Hey. Toda biti jesu. Cosa gara. Jesus, go so do, so da be, go so do go, so da be, ah, oh do go, oh do go, oh do go, oh yeah, the Lord will not let the dead swim, oh. Everybody, you ready? Can we jump? Hallelujah! Say it! Hallelujah! Are you ready? Say Hallelujah! Say neighbor. 
Tell your neighbor, say neighbor. This kind God. Another one, no day. Raise the hand of your neighbor. Say raise him, raise him, raise him, raise him, raise him. Tell your neighbor, say neighbor. This kind God. This kind God. He know they give supper. Tell your neighbor, say neighbor. This my God. This is a very good God. Now tell your neighbor, say neighbor. I am moving forward and backwards never. Now as we are about singing the song again, you are going to change your position because before the end of this year, the Lord will do something to amend yours in your life. Are you ready? Tell your neighbor, are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Oh, you ready? This kind of God, another one, no devil. This kind of God, This kind of God, another one, no devil. This kind of God, another one, no devil. This kind God, another one, 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 another Even before I pray, she opened me and saw me. Listen now, when I was worried and couldn't sleep, he was walking behind the scene. Oh, so that's okay. Look at your neighbor, I boy to I boy. Say, when I was worried and couldn't sleep, hey, he was walking behind the scene. No. One more time, hey, when I was worried and couldn't sleep, hey, he was walking behind the scene. No. Come and join me, worship me. So let you go. So be to go. So be to go. He has done more. Come and join me, worship him. So be to go. He ne mere di ma. He ne mere di ma. When I was down, you came through for me. When men was laughing at me, you came through for me. Ah, my God, he never let me man. Hey, 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 hey. He When I was sick, you gave me that healing. When I had no crumbs, you brought through for me. Ah, he never let me man. Oh, so no bell. Hey, 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 hey. You are the one we call the I am that I am. You are the one we call the lily of the valley. You are the one we call the bright and morning star. You are the one we call the Akune Chimba. Umiliatata, number one. Umiliatata, number one. Ebuebe, 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 Ebuebe. Ah! In the name of Dima. Hey, 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 hey. In the name of Dima. Just the voice to sing. Ah, in the sing. One more time. Say, ah, in the middle, in Father's place. Ah. If you know God has been good to you, lift up your hands and say, Thank you, Father. Say, Lord, we are grateful. Say, Lord, we are grateful. We bless your holy name. We thank you, Abba, Father. So 
no boy that looks like one man. One more time. Ah, ah. Can everybody lift your voice and start to appreciate this name of Jesus? Say something wonderful to the Sabbath Father. Don't just spectate this morning. Be intimate with your worship. Lift up your hands and say thank you, Jesus. There was no one else that been here to you, Lord. We are grateful, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Can we jam our hands to Jesus? Now today, tell your neighbor, say neighbor. We will start it small, small. Now tell your neighbor, just dance like you've won a jackpot. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Somebody make a joyful noise. What? Are we ready? More volume, more volume to the loop. Thank you. Oh yeah, turn it back, turn it back. Oh yeah, when I remember what the Lord has done, I will never go back anymore. My God, when I remember what the Lord has done, I will never go back anymore. Say when. It's a lie, amen. It's a lie, it's a lie. It's a lie. It's a lie. Darling 
darling Jesus. Oh, my darling Jesus, you're the wonderful world. Hey, I love you so. Oh, my darling Jesus. Oh, my darling Jesus, you're the wonderful world. Darling Jesus, darling Jesus, darling Jesus. Oh, my darling Jesus, you're the wonderful world. I love you so. I love you so. Somebody do your hands like this. Are you ready now? 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 Are you ready? Somebody shout Jesus
your wet, boy, I clap your wet, 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 clap your Oh, yeah. 